And here's what I'd like to do. Um, so just turn your chairs this way if you're through. Um, so well, I'd like this to be uh, quite an open discussion, but I think it's interesting. The rest of this time that we're going to be spending today on this, I want to explore some of these. And some of them are, are obvious, you know, sleep, it sure helps, you know, thank you very much. But it's also really interesting to mm, analyze why something works or doesn't work in terms of the stress response, the big bear, that kind of thing. Because um, we kind of intuitively, or at least we've been told, maybe some, how, oh yeah, that would work. But my question is always, why would that work? Or why would it not work? And so I want to analyze that a little bit more deeply um, for the rest of today um, and give you it's probably some insights into why we want to kind of focus. There's more things that we can do that are um, in this. Because I'm going to have each of, each of you, I'm going to go around to whoever's your leaders or whatever of your groups and I'm going to have you just throw out whichever ones that came up and we'll just kind of go through each group um, sequentially and then I think as we go through this you'll go, oh, I never thought of that. And why does that help with or why does that not help with dealing my, with my stress? Okay. So I think this can be an instructive insightful um, experience here. So, who is your person? So, just tell me, what I would like to do is I'm going to ask each of you, and does, we can, more than just the person who is writing can throw out stuff, but um, I'm going to ask you to throw one out, and then I want you to tell me where of these you would put that? Is it questionably useful? Is it pretty good? Or is this one of those, yeah, this, is, this really does work nicely. And then we'll explore why. Okay, so what's one thing that you put on your list? Um, we put listening to music. Listening to music. Where would you put it? I, I don't know, in my opinion, I think it could be best and it could be, it could be all of them because depending on your mood, it could help you stay negative or it could help you become positive. So it's kind of like a yes and no. That's just my thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it, it, exactly. It kind of depends. And since we're going to be spending next Tuesday talking about music the whole time, I'm not going to spend any more time because it is one of those that absolutely um, music could be here. And there's plenty of evidence to show that not just subjectively, but physiologically, that certain kinds of music um, can also hinder the, or induce the stress response some. So, but since we're playing with it for a full day, I don't want to spend any more time on it today. So good. Who's your, okay, throw out. Exercise. Exercise, where would you put it? Well, in my opinion, best because when I'm stressed, I just run, and after I always feel better, and everything's off my mind. Okay. Would anyone disagree? Now, here's what's interesting, and pay attention to this because I'm pretty sure this will show up on a quiz um, that I'll be handing out next Tuesday. But you'll remember this because the way I describe this, you'll go, "Oh, that makes perfect sense." Um, the stress, or excuse me, exercise singularly is better than, and I'm speaking of aerobic exercise, is singularly the best thing we can do for the human condition. Bar none. There's nothing that has been more studied and more validated that this is good for the body-mind than aerobic exercise. And in our other class, we spend a couple days analyzing why that is. And I've got scads and gobs of research to, to demonstrate the absolute benefit of regular aerobic exercise. In other words, long, doing it for a long period of time 
um, not just you know running up the stairs and then calling that good. Um, now, in terms of the stress response, however, why is, think in terms of the fight or flight response to the big bear. Why does it make sense that exercise would be one of those best things? Think in terms of the fight or flight response. If you're experiencing that response and then you go and like do something with it and just let it all out, and then your body's like, okay, you got that done with, let's move on. Yeah, Sarah? Exactly. If you've been telling yourself all day, I should be running from the bear, which is essentially what you tell yourself every time you say, uh-oh, right? Remember that? The smartest thing you can do is follow through on that message. Do something that is like the run from the big bear. Run, jog, swim, whatever. Okay, so does that make sense? Exactly what they said is exactly right. You've got that chemistry, you've got that physiology that's all ready for exercising. Exercising takes you and it, through that and it uses up that physiology essentially. So it's no longer a part of you. Now, the next question is, what is the best exercise? What do you think? Mountain biking. You said mountain biking? Yeah. What did you say? That's closer. What? Something will get your heart rate up? That's close. It is different. And here's the only true answer to that question. There's only one right answer to that question. And that is the one you'll do. <laughs> and it makes no difference a whole lot if you, you know, what it is. As long as it's the aerobic kind and getting out of breath from time to time. If you do, I, I once did the, one of those, if you got on those stepper things, you know, you, you sit there and it's like you're walking up steps. It took me five minutes and I was bored to tears. I was even watching the TV when I was doing it because I thought, I gotta do something interesting. It was so boring. I, could, I couldn't take it. It was just dreadful. I can ride my bike for two hours without even thinking about it. That's what I like to do. Somebody else might love that stepper thing. <laughs> Good. You know, that's the one you'll do. There's, that's the golden rule of exercise. The one you'll do is the best one. The only thing that I would say well, along with that is from time to time, get out of breath. Because in the fight or flight response, they were going full speed. So get out of breath. This is nice. You know, I have people who walk in my neighborhood Saw the same people, they've been walking, 11 years I've been in my neighborhood and I see these people every day or every other day. And it's good that they're out in the sun getting some vitamin D, but I tell them, go up the hill. <laughs> Do something more than just walk and talk. Walking and talking is fine, but it's not going to give you the physiology adaptation that getting out of breath requires. Or, or getting out of breath fulfills in the stress response. It's good, it's not the best. Okay. So excellent response. Um, who's your kind of what 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 else did you get in yours? Okay. Um, Where would that we had a couple times was to laugh. Laugh. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think. Uh, Where would you put it? I would put either on pretty good or best because I think when you laugh. It creates, um, you know, it sends messages to your brain that, um, you know, it's like the opposite of uh-oh. I have, yes. you know, I'm in danger. Yes. It's the opposite of that, so it's reducing that stress response because you're like, oh, I'm okay, I'm laughing. Exactly. That is the reason why laughter and humor is so good, is because there is no perception of threat. 
And any time that message of no perception of threat is happening, your body goes, oh good, okay. I'm going back to my growth mode instead of my protecting mode. I'm going back to my healing and repairing. There, you've probably heard of this story of, was it, Susan, was it Norman Cousins? The guy who had, he had an ankylosing spondylitis or some disease where he was terminal. They said, you have, was it Cousins? Oh, he's this ice skater. Anyway, there was, there was some, he was a psych, he's, he's since gone on tour writing and, and lecturing about this that he, the doctor said, you have essentially a month or two to live. And he said, well, if I only have a month or two to live, I'm going to enjoy the heck out of it. And so he got, and he liked Laurel and Hardy and that slapstick kind of comedy. Back, this was back when MASH and some of those early comedies were really popular. And that's all he did, was he just watched funny movies. And his body healed itself. And he went on tour. He went, he went all around the country proclaiming the value of humor, the, the value of mm, laughter and the healing nature of it. He wrote a, a book on it. So. Um, but what Hannah is saying is exactly right. When you're in the, when you're sensing humor, you're not sensing threat. And that's a good thing. Okay, good one. What else? Uh, Sarah, what? Just one Anything that seems fun. Okay, we did clean. Clean? Like your house or something? Like you caught all this stuff on your mind and then you just clean. Yeah. And then you feel like you accomplished something. Okay. Let's look at that for a second. Where would you put it? Well, it could, it's really good to clean your house, but... You In terms stuff, of stress. But if you have other stuff that you should probably put on, it's not so good. Okay. So if you're avoiding something else, that's what you're saying? Yeah. You're avoiding something, then maybe a questionable... Um, let's analyze it in terms of its value besides the avoiding part because anything we put up here, if we're avoiding the more important things, that could go here. You know, I'm, I'm going to go for a drive. If, I, if I'm avoiding the, my relationship problems and if I'm avoiding my academic or I'm missing work because I want to go for a drive, then that would be here. That going for a drive might be one of those best things, right? So, in terms of the stress response, besides the avoiding part, cleaning, what is it about the nature of cleaning that would put it as a useful activity? Yes. Uh huh. Well, let's put this right about here for now. And you can, when you are, when you're doing cleaning, your focus is on this what I'm doing rather than those other things. Now, it, your mind will still go to those things, but if you're concentrating, remember, our mind can only think of one thing at a time. So it's going, okay, well, I've got to get this, I've got to get this, I've got to get good, okay. Um, the other thing that I think is really um, part of this is cleaning is something over which you have total control, right? You know exactly what to do. You know exactly how you're going to do it. You've got the idea clear in your head of how it's going to be when you're done. Um, remember that stress control relationship we talked about last time. As control goes up, stress goes down. Cleaning, we have total control over it. There's a lot of things like that. Okay, so good one. Um, what else? But who is your captain of your? Hold a cat. Hold a cat. Yeah. That's Where would you put that? Between pretty good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> Better an exercise? <laughs> Hold a cat. <laughs> okay, so explain why you think so. Who put that? Why do you think, Caden? Why do you think that holding a cat goes clear over here? 
<laughs> what if you hate cats? Yeah. You can tell when they like you. Hold your face. Yeah, they hurt. Right. Right. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> so, what's happening when you're holding the cat or the dog? Yeah, I think that's a huge part of it. It's almost like a. Some people could be like family. Yes. You're worried about something else other than yourself. Yeah. There, there is a mm, separate or a connection with something. Definitely. I mean, I think intuitively we all we all sense that connecting with something outside of ourselves on a deeper level is there's no thread in there, um, but it is also, you know, especially cats are pretty soft. I mean, it's kind of an <laughs> it feels good. Um, I think it goes along with like animals and little kids. Like they, uh, cats don't understand what we're going through. They're not capable of feeling stress for social situations or whatever it happens to be. So like sitting there with an animal who's who never has to worry about something like that mm. kind of calms you and makes you maybe think like an animal. Mm. Just thinking about that soft spot mm. sun in the living room instead of problems in your life. Good. I yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yes. They're always aware of like how your mood is. Like I know, like if I've ever had a moment where I'm just kind of like crying or something, my cat will just like attack my face and like have to, but it's like little, not like a bad attack, but like, <laughs> like, like you know, like they just like want to be there. They want to like. It's it has a little bit of sensitivity to what you're experiencing. I think dogs do that do that dogs as well. Do do that. Um, I'm now thinking about this dog that my sister has, and when she brings him around, I go running with him, and it, he's just so in his element when I take him up there in the mountains. Yeah. I can't help but I see him and I see how happy he is to just be there. Mm -hmm. He's glancing back at me and he's like wagging his tail and <laughs> running and running and running. And I can't help but be happy with him. Right. I just get lost in his moment. They even have, um, I was trying to, I, I don't know exactly where this happens <laughs> here in Ogden and some of you might, but there are, um, Older, older folks' places where they include the dogs all the time as part of their therapy. Do you know where that? Where, does anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they've come to the the fairs that we've done. Therapy dogs. Yeah, and therapy animals. Just having them around and being able to pet them, hugely therapeutic. And there's plenty of research to back that up. So, yeah, that would be an, another good one. Okay. Um, what else did we put on your list? Um, we put reading. Reading. Where would you put that? In my opinion, it's best. I love reading. You think it totally is best. But that's just my Really? Yes. <laughs> Does that include your uh, chemistry book, chemistry yeah, textbook? I'm not in chemistry, so that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Kind of depends, doesn't it? I mean, that's the same as music. It kind of depends on your preference. When I try to read stuff that is uh, uh, like, when I, I used to work in a library for a couple of years um, when I was about 21. And during this time, there would be people, literally, it was always women who did this every time. It was a woman who would come in and she would have a stack of these books. This Harlequin romances, I don't know if that's what they still call them, but you know what I'm talking about, those romance novels? They, we wouldn't even check them out. We'd say, take them and she'd come back with a bigger stack and drop them off. And I, I would ask them, you know, why do you like that? Why do you love to read? Oh, oh it's so great. It's just, you know, I, I once looked at one of those just once and I went, oh, <laughs> Kind of R-rated this stuff. But, um, it's a release for some people. I mean, it gets them out of the thing, since you can only think of one thing at a time. Remember that. Over and over again, I'll say, you can only think of one thing at a time, and if your mind is on some fantasy, 
it's not on your stressor. And in my mind, that's okay. That's a good thing. Now I still would go back to the, was it Sarah who, who said, we don't want to do that at the expense of the other things. But when we're really stressed out and we don't have an idea and we love to read, well then good. Do that. Now can you think of other things that are like reading that people do? And I'm sure they've shown up on your list, but are th other things that are like that, that um, can occupy our minds in, and I'll, I, I think if it's not, in terms of our class here, if it's not um, inducing a stress response, then I'll call it good. Okay, so what are the things that are like that, that we can say, mm, yeah, that's kind of like reading, that would be something that would be useful for no perception of stress. I was just, what I've been doing lately is I was just listening to comedians while I'm driving. Oh, it's, so you're kind of combining the yeah. humor with listening. Okay, what else? I'm going to put, whoops, reading. Facebooking. Is that a word now? It's a verb. They've made that a verb. Face I Facebook today. I spent four hours Googling and three hours Facebooking. I Yahooed for 45 minutes. Um, Twittered for another 15. Um, Maybe. I'm not saying no. I, like I say, I'm not trying to say no to anything, but you know, some, some of these things can be useful if, we're, if, we're, if that's our main way of, of being interpersonal with others. Okay. Hobbies. Well, good. Like what? <laughs> Crafts. Um, hobbies. Uh huh. Work on cars. Yep. Painting. Yes. Wait. And you're like, no. Shopping goes way down there. That causes stress. You spend too much. Any kind of, any kind of art, whether it be art, yes. Now. This is really good. This is really great. Think about what your mind can only focus on one thing and when you are doing something that's absolutely consuming your mind, whether it's you're in the middle of a six cylinder engine or you're working on a, um, a beautiful painting, and I think sports falls into here too. It does. I mean, definitely it does. I mean, if you have to win, oh, then over here it goes if you're not winning. But all of these things are things that when we put our mind on it, I mean I have friends in my neighborhood who they live for this craft stuff and I, this would drive me bananas, but they love it and they, they tell me how great they feel after spending time with their friends. You know, how am I going to make this page look? I'm going to make this picture with all these cute fluffy things around it. And, oh, it's so great. Yeah, scrapbooking. Oh, that's as bad as shopping. But people love it, and it works to their benefit as far as stress is concerned. I put shopping over there because I just, oh, it's... Dude, going to the mall with the stressor. I had this, this, this one time, I was shopping with my wife, and at the time there was a, I don't know if they still have it, it was called the Nordstrom Rack. Um, is that still a place? Yeah. Okay. We were in the Nordstrom Rack and she was shopping and, and the Bee Gees were playing in the background, the music. This was a while ago. And I thought, I'm in hell. <laughs> this is hell. If, if hell is anything, it can't be worse than this. <laughs> shopping and the Bee Gees going. It was just drove me crazy. I hate to shop. Um, but all of these things are of that nature where you focus on one thing. 
you know, in an hour I'll be playing basketball. And while I'm dribbling, I can't be going, oh man, I wonder if I'll find a parking place later when I go to that movie tonight. You're focusing on the next thing that's happening. And that's a good thing. Okay? So, where are we? You said exercise. What else? Hannah, what, what else did you put on your list? <laughs> Sorry. Um, we put, um, like, going on vacation, like, camping. Oh, okay. Where would you put that? Um, I'd say pretty good, just because you're just getting vacation? in a relaxing environment, just taking a break from your stressors. Vacations. Now, here's an interesting thing, and we mentioned it a little, but have you ever noticed, and, and I'm speaking specifically about the kind of vacation where you go out into nature and you like it, have you ever noticed, this happened to me one time, I went up to my brother's cabin, I was telling you about when I was doing that values thing, uh, I would go up to um, his place quite a few times because it was just so nice of a getaway. But I remember on one occasion, I was up there for about a week, and I came back to Provo, where, I was, where my, I was living, and it really felt like everyone was in fast motion. Like I kept wanting to go slow down. Nobody had changed, but it felt like everyone was going at double speed. And I had changed, but I didn't realize that, but in that week of being in nature, my rhythm slowed down. Everything about my Mm, I don't know, my, my energy was slower, more, it'll be okay. And then I got back into the swing and I was back to Provo pace. I mean, how busy is that? But um, do you know, have you ever had that experience where you, you do spend some days in nature and you feel like, man, everyone else is so stressed and I feel good. There's something about being in nature that when we are in it and we like it, we, that is our natural, uh, all, all of our ancestors lived in nature. That's our natural place. Natural place. So, I think there's something really valuable in that. Everyone was like, hurry up and go, 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 and slow down. It's okay. Life will still happen better at a not so hectic pace. So, good one. Thank you. What else? Um, you put religious, things. religious things. Where would you put that? What do you mean by religious things? Just like whatever you need. Like? Help others. Help others. Yeah, you like serve or maybe read. Okay, so really read your sacred works, um, attend your religious meetings, is that what you're saying? Okay, so follow through on your values, um, connection with a higher power, those kinds of things. Where would you put that? Yeah, how come? Yes. And when you know you're doing something that you value, I feel better. Yes. Wasting your time yes. Anytime you do something where your values match your activities, you get inner peace. Um, what is it about service that is um, stress relieving? I mean, when you when you spend time doing something useful, and this is kind of obvious, but it's worth talking about briefly. What is it about that happens for us when we help somebody else or some group or something outside of us. You feel worthwhile? Why is that? You just like achieve something that someone couldn't do for themselves. Okay. So there's kind of that beneficent nature of it. Yeah, I think it's just because you're um, putting your thoughts and your, um, your focus on someone else's needs and you're forgetting about everything you need. You're just totally um, making sure that they um, achieve what you Yeah. I think that's right on, hitting it right on the head. Um, you can't, again, you can think of one thing at a time. If you're concentrating on how can I help this person, your focus isn't on, oh man, I got so many problems. 
because you're you're dealing you're helping that person so you're not sensing any stress for yourself you're not per sensing any mm, perceived threat for yourself and I think we could go on and on about all the value and I and if you talk to people who work in hospices or you talk to people who work in hospitals you talk to people who are teachers or people who are out there mm, for the sake of somebody else especially those, I shouldn't say especially those, but frequently they get very little compensation monetarily that they'll say I wouldn't, change, I wouldn't trade this for the world because of the value it has for them. So yeah, there's some deep, and I think that goes along, I mean that, that's part of our spiritual, religious, and that doesn't mean, well, that, that's part of our nature is to be connecting with other people. So good one. What else? What, what is another one from your list? Um, opposite gender friends. <laughs> <laughs> Say that in a few words. What do you mean? Well, yeah. Um, something more explicit was spoken and it was true, but. Uh, what? Yeah, nothing. I'm not going to say Sex. How do you Sex. Okay, so where would you put that? <laughs> so let's look at this from a purely physiological point of view. We could we could explore this for um, quite some time. <laughs> but looking at it from a purely physiological point of view, why is it what what happens in the sex response itself? that is in some way stress relieving. It's just too short. I mean it's <laughs> Say that again. Well it's like the exercise we're stressing as a girl sometimes I have a hard time being mindful and like being in the moment. But if you're doing it right and you get the release okay the <laughs> <laughs> so I heard several things there um, there's a mindfulness component it's very sensual in other words you're getting um, yeah let me let me go in a slightly different way to kind of compare this to something else. How many in here, when you're stressed, do you eat? Yeah. And what's the primary reason why you eat when you're stressed? It feels good. Because it feels great. Yeah. Um, now I would put over here, for the purpose of handling stress, I would put eating over there. But we do it because when we're in the stress mode, we're in a little bit of pain. Some of us are in quite a bit. I was talking. I was at a basketball game last night. Um, my son was playing. We played a game, and then I was talking to one of the players, the moms of the players on the opposite team, and she was like this. And I went, "What's wrong?" She said, oh, "I just have this migraine. It's just killing me." You know, and she's in every way healthy, but she gets migraines a lot. And we talked for a little while, and she's, she's just stressed out of control. She hurts. Okay. One of the byproducts of chronic stress is pain, whatever, wherever that shows up. Well, food is really a lot of pleasure. In the same way, sex, whether it's the actual orgasm part or the foreplay before it, there's a lot of pleasure. There's a lot of sensual touching that feels really good. You can't have both. I mean, you, if you're filling your, your moment up with that pleasure, you're not filling it up with the perceived threat at the same time. That's a good thing. Now, in terms of the orgasm itself, and I, ho I, so, I suppose this is okay to say in here, um, but if you think about the, we remember the stress response kind of looks like this, where you have the threat and you're up in fight or flight and afterwards. Well, does that look similar to the sex, sex response? It's exactly the same. And after you're done, 
it's kind of a, an exhaustion phase, okay? So I don't think we need to be careful with that. I think it's one of those things that mm, it's part of our nature just as much as drinking water is. If you're with somebody who you love. So that's good call. Okay, what else? Let, let's see if you can come up with some things that might show up over here. What, what else? Uh, what did you guys come up with that might be? Um, oh, wrong list. We could... Okay, while you're looking, what... Inflicting pain on yourself. Okay. Yes. Um. My wife just yesterday was, or er, not yesterday, sometime this week, she was talking to a, one of our neighbors and her daughter's cutting herself right now. She's 13. Now, What's the, what's the reasoning why, really shortly, what's the reasoning why a person would do that? They're in pain and they want to, they have control. Of yeah. Absolutely. They have some control and they're in a lot of emotional pain and their, their skewed thinking thinks, this will take away that pain. Transfer. This pain will be a less pain, but, and I can, and I have total control, it's like the anorexic. I have total control over what I'm eating. I have total control over I'm cutting myself. And the perception is, if I have control, then stress levels will go down. Isn't that interesting? And over here, I heard drinking. Would you put that over here? Now, is, you're talking about alcohol, I'm assuming, right? Or Coke and Pepsi and water. <laughs> You're talking about alcohol though, right? So, let me ask you this. Is alcohol a stimulant, a depressant, um, a psych psychoactive? What is it? A depressant. Well, why wouldn't that be over here then? You see on TV, every movie, not every movie, but when somebody's stressed, what do they say? I've got to have a drink. Bad day at the office, they're at the bar. We've got in our heads, alcohol must be pretty good for us. And actually, and I will never promote this ever because I have two brothers who almost died. They're both lifelong alcoholics. And um, alcohol is just sapped their lives away from them, so I'll never promote this, but there's plenty of good research that shows that a drink a day for heart health is actually better for you than no drinks a day. And better than two or three or more drinks a day as well. I mean, you, you definitely don't want to go. But for heart health, they say, yep, it actually opens up your blood vessels. And it's not just the grape, you know, the grape part of it, but it, there is something about, yeah, there is something about the alcohol that seems to be good for the heart. It's not just wine, it's just wine. Right, right. Yeah, our problem is we save it up to Friday and Saturday and just have <laughs> six or eight. <laughs> so, but I will still say, I'll still agree with you because I've never seen an alcoholic who didn't start out as a social drinker. Nobody starts out as an alcoholic. Nobody starts out with breakfast, lunch, and dinner is alcohol. Nobody. They started out with, oh, I have a drink a day. Let's, it's okay. And then the alcohol grabs them. I've seen it firsthand and I hate it. it just rise me and say, if you can control it, good. But I'm still not a fan of alcohol. And it's not a moral issue at all. It is entirely, I've seen it has screwed up my family's life just like nothing else. Like absolutely nothing else. I live in a health issue without smoking. Like, 
So how is it, let me ask you this, how is it that nicotine, is nicotine a stimulant or a depressant or a psychoactive drug? It's a stimulant. It does the same thing as, well, it, it, the stress response and nicotine have almost the same physiology as, as far as the heart is concerned, blood vessels, the, um, everything that takes place when nicotine is present. Why would you say then, and I'm asking you subjectively in your experience, I'm not being critical, why would you say that smoking in your case would be over in this direction? What is it about it that you think? I have some ideas, but what would you say? I don't know. I can be stressed about anything, smoking, thinking, whatever it takes it Any guesses why? Because <coughs> we all say, you're so stupid for smoking. I mean, everyone, everywhere you go, smoking is like the worst thing under the sun. Right? It's so, you know, there's nothing worse than a smoker in our culture now. You can be doing meth, but if you're smoking, oh, <laughs> you're, I, I'm exaggerating a little, but what is it about, so I think we're a little hard on people who smoke. Um, one of my brothers, two packs a day, and without even thinking about it, it also made him the opposite. He went berserk when he smoked. I was actually looking into this once. Um, I had a friend that was smoking all the time. I was trying to figure out what it was, you know, the nicotines he was trying to quit. It's, uh, from what I found, it was the breathing pattern. Mm -hmm. The slow breathe, mm -hmm. holding it, yep. and then slow release actually. That's part of it. If you think about the stress response, <sighs> you know, very chest breathing, very quick and rapid. When you smoke, and I've never smoked, so I don't know. I, somebody gave me a cigarette once, and I went, I remember I was at a Van Halen concert once, and somebody passed me the joint, and I went, what do I do with this? <laughs> 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 She got so mad at me. I said, I don't want anything. But anyway, when you smoke, and I don't, I don't know firsthand, but I'm assuming when I watch people smoke, it's quite deep breathing. Yes? So that interrupts the stress response by itself. Exactly right. Smoking is also something which there is a perceived sense of control. This is something that I have absolute control over, although the addiction component of it, it actually, for a lot of people, it's got you, but you perceive that you have some control. Oh, finally, I'm, and you're by yourself, you're separated. Now in our culture, we really separate them. You can't even be close to the building. I'm not a pro-smoker person, but we've really ostracized people who smoke. Oh man, you're awful, you smoke? Do you think, um, and not just with smoking, but with like, you know, eating or whatever it is, it's kind of like the Pavlov's dogs, like smoking. It just Very like, much so. Like every time I smoke, that's when I want to relax. Exactly. Just kind of mentally think that. Yeah, there is a huge amount of, well, that's what an addiction is. It's conditioning that you have done and you've associated something pleasurable with it. Food, you go to a restaurant and immediately, oh, fun. Wow, this is great. Whew. And you, you've associated pleasurable things, and each time you do that, you reinforce it. So it becomes more of a mm, pattern or, a or an addiction. So I'm wondering, because it seems counterintuitive for how it, the nicotine affects you, like the stress. Oh, absolutely. And I don't smoke very often. I smoke maybe a couple of times a year. Mm -hmm. And when I do, that nicotine really gets me, and I can feel like Surge. You're not you going at the same time, relaxed. Me right back down. It's weird. I mean, afterwards, you. It's a. Yeah, I think, like, while I'm inhaling, I can feel a little bit of energy, but then afterwards, I'm just so calm. And I don't know if the, the breathing alone is that powerful yeah. to counteract the nicotine response. Maybe. Maybe. I don't feel like breathing down the Yeah, and it, it might be the, the after effects. I honestly don't know. And honestly, I haven't spent too much time studying it because 
I, I, smoking is one, health-wise, one of the worst things we can do um, for ourselves. As far as what we know about nicotine and the other 2,000 um, chemicals that are in cigarette smoke, really bad for us. Um, doesn't make us a bad person when we do. That's the, the thing that I struggle with is, oh, you're, you're a bad, evil person because you smoke. You're not. You're just, it's the same as drinking Coke. You know, you're just doing a dumb thing for your liver. It doesn't make you a bad person at all. You're okay. Just behaviors that you've accepted as what you do. So I don't know. I don't know how to answer that for the smoker because it doesn't make a bit of sense why somebody would choose that when they're stressed for the nicotine component because everything about nicotine is get you going, not relax. Okay, moving on. What, what other, let's kind of go around, what, what other things, can you think of anything that's either here or what about absolutely best stuff? I don't know, I don't even remember where we ended. Where was our last? I think kind of we go back to oh. Because in some ways I think that like if you, if, because that's kind of like the typical girl thing that you expect. Like someone's going to be like, oh, my gosh, shopping, it feels so much better. But there's so much stress that comes like afterwards when you've like spent money and you go, oh, my gosh, like I don't think I have this money. But I think like if you can do it in moderation and if you're doing it for things that are going to like help you, I, guess, I don't know. Like for me personally, like, I can see like when I buy a book or if I buy like something that, you know, helps me to feel more like I'm – doing something for myself mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. so like I'm in school right now you know busy doing work you know constantly doing that so if I can take a little indulgence to maybe go do something every once in a while I'm like sort of an, oh, as a reward yeah, as like a reward exactly mm -hmm. and I think that is good but it can become just like any other thing like yep. eating it could become so much so that you all of a sudden are just like yep. whoa I gained all of this weight oh wow I've got lots of debt like yes so I think it can kind of when you are when you're shopping and you put on that new shirt and you look at yourself, well, the feeling you're getting from that is not threat. It's pleasure. Wow. You know, the whole pleasure pain thing is always at work. And it, if we're ever asking ourselves, is this um, something that is useful for me? Ask, you know, let, our, let ourselves tell us, yeah, this, does it create that pleasure, that create that sense of comfort in us? Uh, as far as the stress response is concerned. Now, what you're talking about afterwards, the, the bill, well, that's a lot of pain, mm -hmm. potentially, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so you have to kind of weigh everything. But I can understand why people would call shopping one of those this way kind of ideas because you put your new shirt on and, wow, that's great. I look that good with that on. Man, nice. So. That does make sense, exactly what you're saying, yeah. I just thought of another one. <laughs> working. Um, because I think it can be good because you're earning and you're working towards a goal, but I also think it can be bad because if you're there too much, then you don't have time. You mean on a job? Money. Yeah, like if you're just working. Like, does that make sense? I don't know. If that's well, some works are just stressful too. Yeah. yeah. It's hard work can make you feel good about yourself. Yeah, like if you yep. put like a full day yep. work, you just feel like, yeah, I totally earned Look all what of I that. Built. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're doing constru something constructive in the moment. The challenge that we have in our in our culture is most people hate their jobs. Most people hate their jobs because they haven't decided what they want to become. They fall into a default place that happened to be convenient and they stay in that river, kind of what we talked about with the values thing. Most people, well, I didn't have a choice. This is where I ended up, and I can't get out of it. <sighs> Stressful. But if they are doing things that are, that are, they feel like are constructive, then absolutely, I would, I would put it this way. Sarah, what do you think? One of the things you put down that's kind of different is prioritize, or like get things done just one thing at a time. So plan. And then follow through on it. So set your priorities and then do the things. Total control. 
when you're doing those things. And that's a nice reminder to keep doing your two-week assignment on your time management. Um, absolutely. No question. I think we've, we've hit that one um, sufficiently. What else showed up on your papers that we haven't put up here? Massage therapy. Massage. Really? Where would you put that? I heard three people go, hmm. <laughs> Massage you put over here? Yeah, and I'd agree, and since we're going to be playing with massage in here on a future day, um, we won't talk anymore about it. Suffice it to say, yep. Okay, I saw another hand. Um, what you were saying like, about the outdoors? Mm -hmm. yeah, I live in the mountains, and when I was stressed, I used to just hike up and there was this meadow with the running mm -hmm. water, and it was just like, really relaxing to be up there. It's kind of like that guided imagery that we did mm -hmm. with the mountain lake, and it's just relaxing to be up there, and all your stresses just go away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that whole being mindful in our natural places. Some people love the ocean, and going to the ocean is like what you're experiencing there. I mean, I, I don't know what it is whenever I'm at the ocean. You know, it's, I could spend three hours just staring at that. Like it sounds like what you can with the lake and the, yeah, there's, that's our natural, in our natural environments, our body goes, this is where I'm supposed to be. We've kind of gotten ourselves out of those natural places too much, I think. What other things showed up on your list? Anything else that was way up here, like the massage? Meditate. Okay, meditate. Yep, and since we're going to spend a, a day in here playing with meditation, I mean, not the, all these relaxation exercises are types of meditation, but there is what I would call real mm, meditation that is a little bit different than I'm going to teach you, and it'll knock your socks off. It's one of the most cool things that I've found in my whole life. And it's just, well, yeah. Um, what else? I have had a couple of friends who smoke marijuana to relieve stress. I don't, I don't, like, I don't really get it, but it's very obvious to me being around them that they, like, it's pretty effective. Yeah. So I think. Okay, and this isn't a judgment or a criticism. How do they do academically? Do they do well? When I when I lived in West Virginia, and maybe it was just that, but um, when I lived in West Virginia, most all of them smoked. Most all the boys smoked marijuana. Dumber and a log. I mean, I. They were just, it, you could tell they had no, mm, and this was a large number, and I, I'm, I'm not trying to criticize your friends, because that might be, and marijuana is a sedative. I mean, it's, it's very relaxing. I assume, I mean, people who say it is, my question is always the long-term effects of um, that behavior, like the alcohol or like the smoking, Mm, is that something that the body will appreciate long term? Because in the short run, I can understand that. My, my interest is short and long, and if we can, if we can um, do things that get the same effect without the long term, I mean, I, I guarantee some of you when we do meditation will feel the same as people who are smoking marijuana as far as the level of relaxation you get. Not a single side effect. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm not being critical of them. There's something about that that produces a relaxing effect. My question would be, how is it for their health in the long term? That's still up for debate. Um, and we could explore that a lot more deeply if we had more time. Because it is interesting. So, Oh, these guys in, in West Virginia were the most relaxed people I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, they came into class 40 or 15 minutes late and, what's up, doc? You know, and they, but they couldn't try to have them do it. And that might be, that's why I said maybe it was just West Virginia. 
or maybe too much of it. They didn't do it every now and then when they needed it. Yeah, it was it was pretty it was pretty frequent. They were them. two or three hours like a chain smoker. Mm -hmm. They they had you could I would walk up and down the aisles and I would go cigarette. Marijuana, marijuana, cigarette. <laughs> you could smell it coming. Same with Southern Illinois. It was the same thing. Um, well, I think we get an idea. There's a lot more we can do than what we play with in this class and getting a sense of what those things are so we can just kind of include them in our days. A good call. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. <laughs>